A calibration is the comparison of an instrument against a more accurate instrument to discover whether it meets manufacturer's specifications. As a result of this comparison, a certificate is produced, which reports the instrument's readings and compares them to a reference. Devices like your workshop reference digital multimeter will be calibrated, if required, through software using techniques such as successive approximation to trim the inputs and outputs. It is assumed that the instrument will remain in calibration for a period of time, usually a year, so long as the instrument is kept in appropriate environmental conditions and not mishandled. This would usually be the procedure followed when you send your reference meter to your calibration contractor. As we have seen, accuracy is how closely the measurement agrees with the true value. The accuracy of an instrument or measuring device will be specified by the manufacturers. The accuracy of this device is given as 0.01% plus 0.015% of full scale over one year. The resolution is given as one microamp, which is the second decimal place. So this device is accurate to two decimal places, although three are shown. So it is important to note that more decimal places is not necessarily an indication of increased accuracy. Instruments in the field develop errors over time due to a variety of factors. Drift, environmental conditions such as high vibration or large temperature variations, electrical supply quality, addition of components to the loop, process changes, etc. Most instruments are provided with zero and span adjustments and errors are corrected by performing a mechanical adjustment on the zero and the span. These instruments are sometimes known as conventional instruments. Smart instruments do the same job, but can be digitally configured using a modem or a handheld communicator. This can occur whether the output is digital or analog, such as using a 4 to 20 milliamp heart smart instrument. With such instruments, configuration and calibration can occur remotely, and a historical trend can be generated and transmitted to a central location. An error is the difference between the indication and the actual value of the measured variable. Typical errors include span error. The span indicates the difference between the upper and lower range values. Span errors can be either side of the actual value and will indicate an error at the upper range value. A span adjustment is used to change the slope of the input-output curve. Zero error. Zero errors can be either side of the actual value and will indicate an error which is parallel to the actual value. The zero adjustment is used to perform a parallel shift of the input output curve. Zero and span error. Both zero and span will need to be adjusted to correct zero and span error. Linearization error. Linearization error may be corrected if the instrument has linearization adjustment. If it cannot be adjusted, then it needs to be replaced. One way of looking at the relationship between zero and span is to look at the span adjustment as affecting both the upper and lower range values and the zero adjustment as just affecting the lower range value. It is always a good idea to start with a zero adjustment and end with a zero adjustment. First, turn the zero screw and this will bring the output in line with the lower range value. Then, turn the span screw. This will alter the span to cover more of the range of the output while also keeping the span in line with the upper range value. If you check the lower range value again, you will find that the zero needs to be adjusted again. And now the upper range value will need to be brought into line again. And now the lower range value will need to be brought into line again. A further adjustment of the span and zero will bring the output into line with the upper and lower range values.
Finally, in this case, an increase slightly in excess of the upper range value will produce an accurate result when the final zero adjustment is made. Scheduled calibration checks are an important part of any quality system. Individual instrument calibration. An individual instrument calibration is carried out only on one instrument. The input and output are disconnected. A known source is applied to the input and the output is measured at various points throughout the calibration range. The instrument is adjusted if necessary and the calibration is checked. Loop calibration. A loop calibration is performed from the sensor to all the loop indications with all loop components checked. For example, a temperature sensor could be inserted into a calibrated temperature block. The temperature will be adjusted for each data point. All local and remote indications will be recorded along with the transmitter output. If any loop component is not within tolerance, then a calibration is performed on that instrument. Do not adjust the transmitter to correct a remote indication. Bench calibration. A bench calibration is performed in the workshop on the bench with inputs and outputs measured independent of the process. These calibrations may be conducted when receiving new instruments, to document the correct specifications, and to ensure that the instrument is received undamaged. Field calibration. Field calibrations are conducted in place as installed. The instrument being calibrated is not removed from its installed location. These calibrations will be conducted after installation to ensure correct installation and configuration. Periodic calibrations are more likely to be carried out in the field in the environment in which they operate. If the instrument is removed for a bench calibration and then returned, some error may be introduced to ambient conditions and orientation. Range calibration. A pressure instrument supplied to you may have an instrument range which refers to the maximum capability of the instrument, which could be 0 to 1000 kilopascals. This is not to be confused with the calibration range, which is the range the engineer has specified that the instrument will be calibrated to which could be 0 to 600 kilopascals, which is equal to your 4 to 20 milliamps. Therefore, the input span is 0 to 600 kilopascals, and the output span is 16 milliamps. Always be careful not to confuse the range the instrument is capable of with the range for which the instrument has been calibrated.